Okay, so I know I usually draw from polls to decide which video I'll be releasing next, but this is something I really have to cover right now. Because people are referencing the world record to learn this part of the run, and that is definitely the worst thing you can do when learning this game, for any segment. World record and high level strats are things you have to build up to using and save minimal time, and missing them causes huge time loss, resets, and frustration. For example, Hammer Skip is a frame perfect trick using jellyfish fields to skip the tutorial, and it only saves around 10 seconds in most people's routes, and pretty much nobody outside the top 20 uses it. When you learn a speed run, you want to learn the most consistent strats to gain fundamental understanding on how to play the game. Jumping right into advanced strats just leads to burnout and slower improvement. Trust me on this, and all experienced players will tell you the same thing. People implement risky strats when they run out of things to save time with. As a beginner, you have plenty of things to learn that save a lot of time, that are way less risky, and way less difficult. You can eventually build yourself up to these, but you have to be patient. Speedrunning is all about patience. Don't worry about mastering the hardest strats when you're new to the run. You'll learn them way faster when your fundamental skill is up to par anyway. So in this video, I'll show you how to speedrun all the way up to the top of Jellyfish Fields. That's right, the whole thing with strats that are still fast, but not risky for the time they save. So let's get started where it all begins. Inside the pineapple, you just need to collect 50 shiny objects as quickly as possible. Collect the golden spatula and head outside. Once you're outside, you'll set up the hand disable trick. This is extremely important, so don't brush over it. Lay next to the taxi pad in this spot with this camera angle. When the hand pulls you into the taxi pad, accept the taxi prompt. Then you're going to head back to the same spot and lay there with the same camera angle, and you should be pulled into the loading zone for jellyfish fields. Because you left the level with the hand on the screen, it should now be disabled. This means you can now collect the Calabungie spatula in this next part by jumping out of bounds to grab it. But first, you have to collect the sock. To get this sock effectively, you're going to have to understand how to space jumps properly in this game. When walking off a ledge, there's a large window where Spongebob can jump despite being airborne. So for a lot of jumps in this game, you'll want to jump after you've already walked off the ledge to increase your distance covered. To increase your distance covered further, you can then jump after leaving the ledge with full jumps as opposed to short jumps. To perform a full jump, hold down the jump button rather than tapping it. To maximize your distance covered, perform a bubble spin after performing two max jumps. The bubble spin stalls Spongebob in the air for a short time, extending your distance. However, you can only use the spin stall once before touching the ground again. Using it a second time before landing causes you to descend quickly, which has its own use in other spots, but for maximizing your distance in a jump, it isn't desirable. Okay, so now you're going to apply this knowledge to grab the sock here. Walk off the ledge, space two double jumps, and spin to reach the sock. Now face down and jump over the spatula in the ditch. Land on it, and you should collect it while drowning. Since the hand is disabled from earlier, you can collect the spatula from out of bounds. Once you respawn, pause the game and warp to the Calabungie spatula in the menu. If you happen to have autosave enabled, you'll activate the save game glitch from doing this. This trick has its own utilities, but it isn't necessary in the any percent speedrun. Don't worry though, as it'll automatically go away after collecting the next spatula. Once you've loaded into the Calabungie area, just hit the button and make your way up to this platform here. Now you're going to apply the same jump spacing knowledge as you did before. Space jumps to skip the top platform that leads to the checkpoint area. After the cutscene, walk along the edge of this area and the hammer bot will likely approach you. If he ends up in this position, you can actually jump over it to boost forward from getting hit by it. This saves an extra second if you happen to get it by chance. Climb this rock to prepare for jellyfish rock jump. At this point, this is probably the trick most people will have trouble with when they learn this level. Start by lining yourself up on this high point of the rock that connects the two sides. Walk along this connecting area to line yourself up for the jump. Walk off the ledge, double jump, and spin to land on the rock. Remember to hold down the A button during this as opposed to tapping it, because you want to maximize your jumps. This part may take a few minutes to practice, but if you understand the concepts covered earlier in the tutorial, you should be fine. If not, go back and rewatch the part where I talked about jump spacing when collecting the sock by the cow bungee spatula. Once you've landed, make your way to the left side of Jellyfish Rock and climb up to the sock. Collect the sock and jump onto the trampoline to complete the tutorial level skip. Now that you're here, you have a couple of options. Either head straight to the box area, or if you need an extra sock for your route, jump onto this trampoline here and head up to the fountain area on this cliff. Climb the tiki's, grab the sock, and drown yourself in the pond. You should respawn on this platform where you can continue to the box. Once you're here, head to the duplicated tron by the gate guarding the golden spatula. You're gonna attempt to hit the button that this thing is covering without having to wait for it to explode. Walk up to the duplicated tron with this angle, facing this direction into the wall. Push forward and quickly jump and spin in succession. The button should be pressed as the duplicated tron reacts to the hit. If you failed, you can attempt this a couple of more times until you have to bail and avoid being hit by the duplicated tron's explosion. Collect the spatula and enter the jellyfish cave's loading zone. I'll cover this next part in another episode, but if you're on a roll and want to continue learning the rest of the run, you can watch the full uncut tutorial for this route. I'll link that in the description. If you need any help on specific tricks, I'll link the playlist with them in the description as well. Let me know in the comments section if you found this full segment tutorial helpful, and let me know what you'd like me to cover next. 
I'll pin the Twitter poll in the comment section for you to vote on the next trick covered in the series. And be sure to follow my Twitter for updates as well. Remember, I have a public Discord server open to anybody who wants to join. Feel free to ask questions in there. I'll likely get back to you sooner there anyway. Thanks for keeping up with these videos. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.